what is a credit score? How does it affect me? And how can I build it? If you're in your 20s and you want to own a car or even that dream house, then you need to know about credit. So in this video, I will give you an intro to the credit score system and how you can use your credit card properly and not be in debt. This is the personal finance guide part two. Chapter one, introduction to credit scores. Now the credit score acts as a quick snapshot of a person's credit worthiness and provides insights into how likely they are to repay borrowed money responsibly. It helps lenders make informed decisions about granting loans, credit cards, or other forms of credit. A higher credit score generally indicates a lower credit risk, making it more likely for the individual to receive favorable terms, such as lower interest rates or higher credit limits. Now in Jamaica, and more specifically the information that I found on Credit Info Jamaica, the credit score is represented by a number from 250 to 900, which is also accompanied by a risk grade ranging from A to E. Chapter two, the importance of credit scores. Now credit scores play a crucial role in financial transactions and have significant importance in various aspects of personal finance. So here are some key reasons as to why I say this. Number one is loan approval. So when you're applying for a loan, such as a mortgage, a personal loan, or auto loan, lenders use credit scores to assess the borrowers. I don't know if I that word. Say it with your chest borrowers <laughs> credit worthiness now a higher credit score increases the chances of loan approval and may lead to more favorable loan terms such as lower interest rates and higher loan amounts number two it helps with credit card applications now credit scores influence the approval of credit card applications so individuals with higher credit scores are more likely to qualify for credit cards with attractive rewards benefits and lower interest rates number three interest rates as i just said credit scores directly impact the interest rates offered on loans and credit cards now a good credit score can result in lower interest rates saving borrowers <laughs> saving people who borrow money significant amounts of money over the life of a loan and number four in the united states with rental applications now landlord and property managers in the u.s often use credit scores to evaluate rental applications so a good credit score can increase the chances of securing that desirable condo or that sky top luxury apartment <laughs> now number five is utility services believe it or not so some utility companies may check credit scores in the united states before providing services so a strong credit score can help avoid security deposits or advance payments for utility services now the reason why i'm sharing this information for both people who live in jamaica and for people overseas is that chances are some of us are going to migrate and we're going to do this in our 20s so we have to know what we're getting ourselves into if we want to adjust to their way of living. And they use the credit score system a lot in the United States. So I'm just prepping you for that. All right, boom. So let's jump back into the lesson. Now that we know what a credit score is and we know what the credit number is, how is it actually calculated? Well, in Jamaica, credit scores are typically calculated by credit bureaus using specific algorithms that assess an individual's credit history and financial behavior. Now, while the exact formula used by the credit bureau may vary, the calculation process generally considers several factors. So number one, it takes into consideration the payment history. Now it evaluates how consistently and timely an individual makes their credit card payments, loan payments, and other financial obligations. So on-time payments contribute positively to the credit score, while late or missed payments can have a negative impact. So pay on things on time. Second is the credit utilization. Now this refers to the percentage of available credit that an individual is currently using. So a lower credit utilization ratio, which is using a smaller portion of credit available or available credit, is generally favorable and positively affects your credit score. Now we have the credit mix. So this considers the variety of credit types an individual has, such as credit cards, 
loans and lines of credit. A diverse credit mix can be viewed positively as it demonstrates the ability to manage various credit responsibilities effectively. Fourth, we have the length of the credit history. Now, this refers to how long an individual has had credit accounts. A longer credit history can positively impact the credit score as it provides more data for assessing credit behavior. Now, number five, we have recent credit applications. So if you make multiple credit inquiries within a short period of time, it can negatively affect the credit score. It may imply increased risk or credit risk as it could in indicate a borrower seeking excessive credit in a short period. Note that in Jamaica, we are entitled to one free credit report per year by the credit bureau. So use that information as the power and the tool in your hand. Now with all this being said, you're probably thinking, how can I build or improve my credit score? Now on a personal level, what I did when I started my journey was that I started with a credit card. So for those with little or no credit history, applying for a credit card or a secured credit card can be a good starting point. Second is I made timely payments. Consistently making on-time payments on credit cards, loans, and other bills like JPS, water commission, flu and digital, yes, that's a real thing, is crucial for building a positive credit history. And number three is I kept my credit utilization low. So I aim to keep my credit card balances low in comparison to the credit limit. Now, the next step that I did was I diversified my credit types. So having a good mix of credit types such as credit cards, installment loans, and these are the loans that you pay at courts or higher purchase, can demonstrate credit worthiness and improve credit scores over time. However, avoid opening multiple accounts just for the sake of diversification. And by no means am I implying that you should take up these loans or trust things from any place that does higher purchase. I'm just saying that this can help build your credit history or your credit worthiness. So attack these things with a plan and don't just jump head first and say, oh, I'm learning this from YouTube. <laughs> Fifth is keep your old accounts open and I just learned this the other day. So the length of credit history is a factor in credit scoring. So keeping old well-managed accounts open can positively impact your credit score because you have a longer credit history. All right, that's it. That's the end of credit scores. But the lesson not finished yet because what's the tool that I said that you can use to build your credit score? credit cards. I'm not just going to push you off in the abyss of credit scores. I'm going to tell you a little bit about credit cards so you can know how to handle them and know what you're getting yourself into. Now, the primary purpose of credit cards is to provide a convenient and flexible method of payment, allowing individuals to make purchases without using cash immediately. So the convenience of credit cards makes them popular for both everyday transactions and larger purchases. Now, there are various types of credit cards available to cater to different credit needs and financial situations. Now, some common types of credit cards include the travel credit cards. So this is designed for frequent travelers and these cards offer travel-related perks such as air miles, travel insurance, airport lounge access, and hotel benefits. Now, second is the cashback credit cards, and I love using these. So these cards provide a percentage of cashback on eligible purchases, offering a straightforward way to earn money back on spending. So be mindful, there are more cards out there, but this is just a guide to the basics. So how do credit card transactions actually work? Step one is the authorization stage. When a credit card holder makes a purchase, the merchant requests authorization from the card issuer to confirm that the card is valid and has sufficient credit available, means that it have money on it. Second is the processing stage. So once authorized, the transaction is processed by the merchant's payment processor and the purchase amount is reserved or held on the cardholder's available credit. Third is the settlement. At the end of each day, the merchant payment processor submits all the authorized transactions to the card issuer for settlement. Now the card issuer pays the merchant the purchase amount minus any applicable fees. Next up is the billing cycle. 
Now, cardholders receive monthly statements detailing their transactions and outstanding balances. They have a grace period to pay the balance in full without incurring interest charges. Now we have repayment and interest. If the cardholder pays the full balance within the grace period, no interest is charged. However, if the full balance is not paid and interest is applied to the remaining balance, it becomes part of a new statement balance. So what I'm clearly saying is that don't bring over balances, just pay it in full. Look at us, we've made it to the end of the video and now we know the basics of credit scores and credit cards. Now use this knowledge and tread into the future of a high credit score individual. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video and thank you for like, sharing and subscribing to my content. It means a lot because this channel is going places and it's all because of you guys, my future millionaires. Until next time, work hard, make money and happy investing.